If it was, we would be listening to the dozens of community programs that work with low-income islands and vulnerable populations like people with disabilities and children and older islands who understand what Iowa needs and what actually works. But these folks showed up in the subcommittees in both the Senate and the House to raise serious concerns and to oppose this bill and share about how it would hurt Iowans. If it was truly streamlining the system, they would be in favor of it. This bill is not about the facts. We have the lowest level of staff usage in our state in 14 years. And you need to be very low income to qualify for this. And the money can only be spent on food. And so the worst thing that can happen with this legislation, uh, if this legislation doesn't go forward, is someone who may not qualify on some technicality still is hungry and can get access to food. It's one of the most effective assistance programs. It has an incredibly low risk for fraud. And fraud was mentioned earlier, but it wasn't fraud that we see happen in our state. It was mistakes made by our departments. And those have been in a process of correcting mistakes. Um, and we're just about to disenroll a lot of people from Medicaid due to the ending of the pandemic period. And this is going to be chaos for a lot of families who are low income who are still struggling, even though they might not technically qualify. This bill is not about saving Iowa's money. The state share for this program administration has stayed flat for years. And implementing a new program with new additional tests will add to the administrative costs. And we heard it will add $3 million a year to our existing administrative costs. In states like Pennsylvania, where a similar, similar program was attempted, it was a failure. The state paid more. And 100,000 people who did actually qualify just couldn't make it through the process and could not get the food assistance they needed just because of the paperwork and the process was too much of an obstacle. You know, and with Medicaid, it could be a one-time savings, but what is the long-term cost of people not having access to healthcare in our community for providers in rural communities not getting paid? And that's, that's a significant cost we need to look at. This bill is not about helping Iowa's economy because every single month, $43 million in SNAP benefits come to our state every month. And I encourage you all to learn about how much your districts are receiving each and every month, because it is significant. Those are dollars that are going into our local grocery stores. For rural communities and small towns, that is significant. That's keeping small town groceries open. 